My name is Mary Ryan and I'm the Director for Quality Assurance and Regulatory Affairs here at Penlon Limited. I am responsible for the compliance and the quality management system and the regulatory compliance of all of the products that leave this building um, as it goes out into the market. Penlon reacted very swiftly to the COVID-19 crisis. On Monday, March the 16th, the, team, the development team had got together and had pulled together our existing technologies to look at how we could hybrid what we had. This was all done in parallel to the setup of the high value manufacturing catapult. So both of those efforts were actually happening at the same time. And by the Thursday, our engineering team had pulled together a prototype. So on the Friday, uh, our technical team and um, myself, we pulled in our um, consultant clinician, Dr. Gabor Varetsky. Um, he came on site so we could lay out the standard usability and the clinical justification for our hybrid product. Um, it was really quite exciting because we started to see in front of us that their product could in fact achieve the minimum requirements that were needed to be able to put an emergency ventilator into the NHS. And so we documented that very de in a detailed way on the Friday afternoon. And by the Friday night, we were already up on a Zoom call in front of the Cabinet Office project team, the head of the NHS, and also the head of the clinical team at the MHRA to propose our new device and its features. Um, that night, it was a bit of a buzz, to be honest, because we were interrogated over the specification and the different types of breathing modes and the usability and the robustness of the devices that we're putting together to make this hybrid ESO2 emergency ventilator. And we were actually given verbal acceptance at that meeting because of the long legacy of our existing three products that have been pulled together the value of the CE mark that we have, the reach that these products have already on the market, and the robustness of our quality and regulatory system. It was a really proud evening. I was absolutely delighted, but I was really proud. Penlon is a small organisation, but we have a real large reach. And it's time for the dynamism, the development, the skills, the competence of the team here to be able to shine. We've always proud ourselves on being able to reach out and help those in more challenging geographies around the world. So this was absolutely the right type of project for us to reach out to our neighbours, our friends and community and try to help to save lives. The Quality and Regulated Department has transformed over the last 10 weeks. We've had a number of consortium members coming forward and leading their teams under the governance under the, the Penlon quality system, as well as a number of volunteers and individuals who have been hired specifically to enhance my team and bring in their strengths in quality management and supplier quality management as well. Um, I've been able to reach out to my network across the ABHI and we've had voluntary teams coming here to help with inspection and documentation reviews. And I've also had some support as well from the, my network again on um, supporting me with the regulatory compliance and supporting me with some of the technical file generation. The support has been overwhelming and I'm just proud to be actually part of a larger team and help and having them help us achieve getting products to the market and saving lives. There's actually been two challenges in the last 10 weeks that I would say that have come to the fore. The first one has been making sure that all of us keep individuals stay healthy and that we are isolating ourselves appropriately, taking all the relevant hygiene precautions, taking the extra vitamins, because this has been a marathon from the very beginning. It's long hours, it's commitment, 
and it's day in day out where we're still running at a fast pace and taking decisions along those lines so definitely just making sure that we're keeping healthy and getting sufficient rest. The second challenge really was more of a cultural challenge. We are working now with teams from the automotive background and the aerospace background, all of which we all have different cultural um, languages that we use within our own industry streams and our own boundaries and our own practices. So it's really been a form of normalising all of that with under the framework of having a medical regulatory background. And I have to say is that it only took a short period of time because the cornerstone in achieving this has all been about supporting the NHS and supporting our, communi our communities. And by doing that, everybody's managed to normalise much quicker. And I have to say, is that even though through that initial few, few weeks of bedding in together and um, understanding how processes should be laid out and what documentation is required and that making sure that um, the device history records, the documentation just as important from a legal aspect as the functionality of the device itself. So by normalising all of our processes, we have achieved so much more than the sum of our individual parts. My experience has been an incredible time actually working within the consortium. There is a lot of talent, a lot of professionalism, a lot of new learnings that we've all been taking from each other. All we're doing is developing ourselves as well as producing this phenomenal device to be placed on the market. We've had a lot of fun on the way as well some real great characters that I've met throughout the times and I know that we've all made friends for life. But going forward, we've all enhanced ourselves, we've enhanced our professionalism, we've enhanced our ability. We know who we can knock on the door in the future if any of us needed other assistance or needed additional competence in finishing a project, for example. It's been an absolute pleasure working with the teams across the consortium and we've achieved what I thought initially might have been the unachievable. Generally my waking call every morning around 6.15 is with Peter Lloyd at Siemens. Um, he's been my right hand man through, from the very, very beginning. He's the head of quality at Siemens and we have been working hand in hand ensuring that all the deliverables of this project um, are achieved and on time and he's been a huge support to me but that doesn't negate the amount of support that I have from our own Penlon team and then across the quality heads across the rest of the consortium they've all been incredible they've all been committed very very hard working and I just couldn't be more proud of the entire team to be honest. The ESO2 emergency ventilator has got a great heritage on the market. For nearly 20 years the sub-assemblies of these products have been serving the globe and um, without having any vigilance issues. So the device itself has got complex breathing modes and therefore it can satisfy a full range of patient types. At Penlon we've been able to modify the original product to satisfy the transforming requirements from the MHRA. One of those requirements was to provide the patient with uh, more fresh gas during um, active catheterised suction, whereby a patient who's then maybe in the advanced stages of the disease has to have their uh, secretions removed from the lungs but you still need to ventilate the patient at the same time so we've been able to drive extra gas into the patient to make sure that the lungs can um, accommodate both the ventilation and also the suction at the same time so this is really another patient support mode that we've been able to adapt. We can use the knowledge that we've gained over the last couple of months to look at how we develop our ventilators going forward. We have already looked at our existing models and how we can change and adapt to much more sophisticated breathing modes. These are all under development right now, so 
that's quite exciting. But also we've, also, we've made new friends, new network, new contacts throughout this project that can help us speed up the development that might have taken much longer in the past. So I have to say that this project has brought us all together a, a whole pool of new talent and competencies and abilities on how we can transform our products going into the future. I'd like to finish off here by saying that we couldn't have achieved what we have done without the alliance and the support from the quick turnaround of our Notify Body SGS and also with the support and the acknowledgement and swift turnaround as well from the MHRA. We've had to do what some people would have thought was impossible. We've qualified automotive facilities and aerospace facilities to be manufacturing um, or building the assemblies of our subparts of our ESO2 emergency ventilator. In doing that, we managed to qualify all of these sites within two weeks. And that has been working round the clock and making sure that all the appropriate dossiers have been pulled together. And the engagement um, of all of the staff within the consortium has been incredible. But in particular, by delivering this information to our notified body, making sure that they have all of the information in advance of making these decisions. And then the independent review again from the MHRA has just felt that We've been able to, to do this hand in hand as a united nation together to support the NHS. I want to add that I am truly humbled to be part of this project, to be part of this fight against COVID-19. And I'm so proud to be part of this consortium and one of the leaders in making sure that we leave no stone left unturned when it comes to patient safety and that no community is left bereft of not having adequate equipment to treat their members. Making sure that people in our families and our friends and our towns and villages all have the necessary equipment to have these products to save lives. Thanks. <laughs>